So do you want to learn how to take pictures of silhouettes? If so, this is the video for you because in it, I'm going to break down how you take a silhouette photo. We're going to talk about how to set up your camera, which camera settings to use, where to place your subject, along with some bonus tips and tricks to help you get awesome silhouette photos. So if you're new here, hi, my name is Audrey Ann from Live Snap Love, where I help you master your camera so you can beautifully capture your children, your family and the world around you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and you'll stay in the loop for new videos. And also click in the description below this video and you're going to find more resources to help you master photography and your camera. But for now, let's dive into how to get a great silhouette photo. Now, the first thing I want to say, and this is specifically for you beginners out there who might have an entry level camera, camera and kit lens, you definitely don't need any kind of special equipment to do this. So you can absolutely do this with the camera that you have and the lens that you have. So if you are working with beginner equipment, entry level camera and maybe the kit lens that came along with it, then don't worry, you're absolutely still going to be able to take a silhouette photo. It's definitely more about technique than equipment. So let's dive in now to step number one, which is to make sure that you're shooting into the light. So the most important element of a silhouette photo is where you place your subject in regard to the light. So unlike other types of images where we may want to light our subject from the front, with a silhouette, we always want to have the light source behind our subject so that we as a photographer are shooting into the light. Now, if you are shooting outdoors, this is going to be the sky. So in this example here, this image was taken at sunrise and I'm shooting into the light pretty much where the sun is coming up. Now, if you were shooting indoors, then the same thing applies. Your light source in this situation is going to be the window, in which case you are going to place your subject in front of the window and you as a photographer are going to be shooting into that light source. Now, you can do this with any type of light source. As I said, you can do this with the sky, you could do this with a studio light, with a window, with a car light, absolutely any light source. But you're gonna find this probably easier to start if you do this outdoors, and particularly at sunrise or sunset. You could even try this with a midday sun, but because the light is coming from above rather than from directly behind, it's gonna be a lot harder. So if you're new to this, I suggest starting outside, try to get as close to sunrise and sunset as possible. Not only will that give you an amazing background sky, you're also going to find it easier to capture your first silhouette. And then you can move on to other types of light sources as you get more confident with the process. So let's move on to our camera settings now because I actually want to change your metering mode to spot metering if you don't use that already. So what will happen if you use something like evaluative mode is that your camera's gonna try and balance out this exposure. We don't want that to happen because we definitely want to expose for the background, the light source, and we want our subjects to be really dark and underexposed. We don't want our camera to try and light our subjects. So the easiest way to do this is just to tell the camera where we want it to meter from. So we do this by using spot metering. Now you'll have this on nearly all cameras, so I want you to switch to that. You'll see this as a kind of box with a dot inside it. Now, the one I'm showing you here is Canon, but they look very similar for all other camera manufacturers and models. So go and switch your camera to spot metering, which means that we are able to meter for the scene correctly to give us a silhouette. So now that we have our subject, in front of the light source, in this case, the sky, and we as a photographer are shooting into that light and we have our camera set to spot metering, we now want to meter for the light source or the background. So in our example, this means we're going to meter for the sky. But do bear in mind that if you were trying this indoors with your window as your light source, you're going to meter for the window. So you always want to meter for the background. 
So just put your metering point over an area of sky and then you're going to plug in your aperture, shutter speed and ISO settings. Now I do want you to shoot in manual mode for this. You're going to find it a lot easier than shooting in aperture priority mode because if you use aperture priority mode when you move the camera it's going to change the settings. If you just do this in manual mode it's not going to change until you change the settings. You're actually going to find it so much easier. Now if you aren't confident choosing your settings in manual mode then I have something for you. If you go to the description underneath this video you're going to find a link to a free manual mode cheat sheet and that's going to help you choose your settings. Just go to that link underneath this video, grab that and that's going to help you choose your settings. Now for specifically for a silhouette again you are going to be choosing the aperture shutter speed and ISO that is best for the light but the one I'm going to give you a tip on is aperture because in cases with a silhouette we generally want to keep the background in focus as well and we don't want to blur that out too much. So I would choose an aperture of around f 5.6 to f 11. That's still going to let quite a nice light amount of light into your camera but it's also going to give you that depth of field that you're going to keep your background in focus as well. So camera settings dealt with is time to make sure that our silhouette looks good. Now what is important to note here is that we want to make sure that we isolate our subject. So what you've got to remember is that you're only going to see what the subject is by its outline, which means we don't want to have things merging into our subject. So if you have a group of people like in this example here, make sure that they are all separate. That way you can see a separate outline of each person. If you had everyone huddled together, you're just going to see one big black blob and that's not going to make a great silhouette. Similarly, we want to make sure that if there's any other items in the frame, like trees, for example, or bushes, that our subject is not merging with them. We always want to make sure that we have that nice, clear outline of our subject so we can see exactly what it is just by the shape of the silhouette. Now, a little tip here is to make sure that you get down low. You don't want to be shooting down on your subject because that's just going to make them merge in with the horizon. Remember, we want that clear outline of our subject and we want them isolated. So if you get down low and keep your horizon in the bottom third of the frame, if possible, you'll make sure that you have a nice clear outline to your subject and they're not going to merge into the horizon. Now the next step and this is optional is to enhance your silhouette in post processing. So if you're using something like Lightroom or Photoshop you can definitely take your silhouette photos up a notch by some simple adjustments. So if you feel that your silhouette is just not dark enough, you've got too much light onto your subject, then you can simply move down the black slider to the left hand side and that is going to darken the blacks in your image and give you a more dark silhouette. Now if you have used the sky, especially at sunrise or sunset as we recommended back there at the beginning of the video, it's also a great time to be able to play with the colours in your images. Now you can just simply move the temperature and tint sliders here under the white balance and you can move those around and you can play with the background in your image and get a totally different effect depending on what you want to do. You can also go down to the HS L sliders that stands for hue, saturation and luminance and you can definitely play with the colors there as well. So there's definitely a lot you can do in post-production to really take your silhouette photos up a notch. And finally don't forget to download that free manual mode cheat sheet. You're going to find capturing silhouettes so much easier in manual mode. Just go to the link below in the description to grab your copy and I will see you guys next week. Bye for now.